Professor, what about these uh, Marxist stories in trying to drive this wedge? Yes, uh, because you know, they just wanted to create the problem, then only they would be able to thrive. Irfan Abib, I know he was technically my teacher, but why I did not, uh, I do not admit it, because uh, he is not a very ambitious man. He could have been easily a governor, he could have been easily a vice chancellor, but he doesn't want to be because they wanted to control one is Aligarh Muslim University, and the second one is ICHR, because it has got huge funds. Once they are, I mean, I mean uh, this one in ICHR then they would be able to manipulate any organization. That is their only aim. Otherwise, you know, they don't have any other things. And for that, they would be, they are ready to do anything. Kuch bhi kar sakte hai. Jo Hindi mein kehte hai, kuch bhi kar sakte hai. But now they have been, I mean, continuously, people have been against them now. Not only the Hindu community, even about the, in, among the intellectuals also. Uh, now they don't come out that fiercely as they used to do earlier. So now they are on a uh, this one, I mean, uh, back feet. But this should be continued. Another generation of Marxist historians like Audrey Kush have come up now. And yes. They are taking. Ah, no, the, 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 but they, 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 no, they have an organized group, and we don't have an organized group. We have to create a liberal group of people. Because ours also, I mean, because you know, it, sometimes it goes extreme group that uh, Pushpak Vimana and uh, this surgery and that surgery that creates the problem, and nobody able, would be able to follow them. Sir, how how AMU control and ICHR is uh, connected to uh, this? Uh, I, I ICHR has got huge funds, huge funds. And uh, they would who be funds, able to. Who funds this? That is government. government. The government fund how is. is connected to Ayodhya, like how it is interferes with Ayodhya? Uh, because you know, they would be able to manipulate the opinion of scholars from there. That is uh, almost all historians, you know. And if you are in ICHR, then you can fund any kind of project for anybody. So that is how they uh, dominate all these historical uh, groups and associations. For example, the whole JNU is like that one. So they can continue enjoying this, uh, what they are controlling, mm -hmm. but with the solution, what you are proposing, mm -hmm. how it affects their fiefdom in AMU and ICHR? No, extreme like is, you know. You don't want ICHR even. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. No, the problem is, you know, because uh, earlier they had created some problem in Aligarh Muslim University. At that time, BJP was supporting them. And now they have turned against BJP. And now again they will be turning against the Muslim community. It's like that one. They they just wanted to have that create a that divide and rule policy. And uh, this one is one is uh, Aligarh Muslim University again. The history department is uh, known as Advanced Study Center. It has got huge funds. So all these huge funds. I mean, you just uh, Arun Shauri's book. He has written about all these things. If you go through that one, you know he has fully exposed them. So it is because of the continuous uh, exposure like this one. I mean, I mean people like uh, Arun Shauri and other people have been criticizing them. Now at least they are on a back foot. Not only Irfan Habib, even Romila Taparji and other Marxist historians also. But we have to keep at this tempo. Otherwise, you know, again they will dominate. The whole history congress is with them. You just cannot do anything. You cannot have even a membership also. Do you think we will be ever able to implement a solution? So because uh, with respect to the Honorable Judiciary, uh, it seems to be running away from uh, uh, hearing on the case. Yeah. Uh, or do you think an out-of-court settlement or any other alternative solution could be implemented? Yes, an out-of-the-court settlement is the, the best thing that is possible. And uh, uh, recently a group of this one, uh, Muslim intellectuals had contacted me from Lucknow. It's not that prominent Salman is we and other people. They are there. I mean, they are all for it. But youngsters are now coming forward. A number of people. Um, I was, I mean, one week before I was in a college known as Muslim Faro College. There also students were raising a lot of questions. So a kind of now, uh, this one is coming out in the Muslim community itself. And it, uh, if it grows up, you know, I mean, uh, there will be an inside revolution in the Muslim community itself. So I am very hopeful of it. But we will have to support them. That kind of support is now not coming out from the government side also.
I had just one question and this is uh, arising out of several things that are in the media right now. Um, on the on the authenticity of the structure that's right now there being an actual mosque, yeah. as in, uh, could you also throw some light on on the Babri structure? I'm calling it a structure yeah. right now yeah. because yeah. I'm not too sure if it's really a mosque because yeah. that's uh, we, we don't get to hear too much about that. So could you throw some light on that? Uh, this is architecturally, if you look at it, uh, this is a Lodi period structure. Lodi in between that Lodi period and Mughal period. In Mughal period, you would be having that double domes. Double domes, I mean, if you go, the first double dome of that kind is in that Sabzaburj in Nizamuddin area. That is a double dome, where, I mean, and that will be having a huge drum type, this one base also. And in uh, Lodi period, you will be having that as uh, this one, a, 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 a octagonal base would be there on which that uh, single dome would be there. So it is a single dome and it is a triple dome also. There are three domes like this one. So that is a typical feature of this uh, Lodi period and Babari period. But I mean just after that one we have got this kind of double dome which you find in Sabzaburj also and in Humayun's dome also and then finally in Taj Mahal that the culmination is in Taj Mahal. And then you have got that lotus that is a in, uh, inverted lotus. That is again a typical feature of this uh, uh, Sher Shah Suri's uh, period onwards. But when it comes to Shah Jahan's period, you will be having inverted lotus, but that is a, with a overflowing stalk. It will be a huge stalk would be there. But this is typically a kind of Lodi period and Mughal period mosque. So that way we should attribute it to this uh, uh, Babar only. And there is this man that is that uh, Joseph Stephen Taylor, who had come to in 1763, he says it was perhaps destroyed by Babur or by Aurangzeb. There is a there is a difference of this one. So some historians say no, it was destroyed not by Babur, because Babur was that way. He was a I mean a different type of person. Aurangzeb was of course a highly fanatical person. So that way, he says no, it was uh, he who had destroyed. But architecturally, when I look at it, I don't think it was uh, during that uh, Jahangiri period. Because in Jahangiri period, you will be having that engrailed arches would be there. So this is not that kind of engrailed arches or cusped arches. And that uh, dome is also not a double dome. Was it, were there prayers offered there? Or was, it, was, it, uh, was there a masjid existing there? Were there prayers being offered? Because there is also this thing that we get to hear in the media that it didn't have uh, the current structure. It didn't have all. The, it just had three minars. It didn't and and for a for a structure to be a masjid, there should uh, be having no. all the minar in during Lodi periods. You will not be having minar. You will be having only dome. Uh -huh. But when it comes to the period of Jahangir and Shahjan, you start uh, Akbar also. For example, if you go to Sikandra, there in the front portion you will be having four minarets. And that evolution of that uh, minaret is, you can find it in Taj Mahal. Similarly, Humayun Storm's evolution of that, uh, this one dome, the culmination is in Taj Mahal. Babri was, were prayers being offered? Uh, prayers were there, I mean, during those period, but not, I mean, uh, predominantly it was Hindu uh, worship only. Well, since not, the structure was built, um, uh, Mamaji, I'm trying to uh, just get yeah, you to that yeah, point. Yeah. Since the Babri structure was built yeah. on that side, yeah. do we have any records that are showing that it was a live uh, and existing masjid where prayers no, were No, 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 no. Nothing, nothing. Because all these people, you know, it is all the records from all these people. They all say, right from William Finch, he came to, during Jahangir. He speaks only about the Hindu worship only, not the Muslim worship. And then, I mean, during the period of all these people, none of them were, I mean, Hindu worship people. They were all, uh, they were all um, independent scholars, you know. And uh, they don't speak about the Islamic worship. They speak only about Hindu worship. Thank you. Yes, sir. राम जन्म भूमि थी या नहीं बाबरी मस्जिद वहां पे उस जमाने में जो आपकी हिस्ट्री नॉलेज है क्यों बनाई गई अब बिकॉज़ यू नो व्हेनेवर ए दिस आर्मी कम्स आउट इफ यू डिस्ट्रॉय आई मीन ही हैड डिफीटेड ऑफ कोर्स इब्राहिम लोदी and then he came to India and the predominant population was Hindu population. If you destroy their idol worship and Islam comes out, you know, there is a problem with uh, all this Semitic religion. Semitic religion I means Judaism, 
Christianity and Islam or this religion. They believe only their religion is right. It's not uh, like Hindu way of thinking. Survey Bhavandu Suginam, Survey Sandudana. It has no place in that one. So they believe that I mean only their method of worship is right. Only they will be going to Jannat. All others will be going to hell. So it is part and parcel of that kind of iconoclasm which is ingrained in the Muslim mind in the initial stage. But now Muslims are also changing. Uh, two parts. First, we do hear that the Ram Mandir was broken uh, from Ghazni's period or, or something. In three times or something, I think Minak, Dr. Minakshi Jain has spoken about it. That was There is probably evidence that it has been broken in several phases and then rebuilt over and over again. That's my first question. The second is that there are estimates um, by Sitaram Goel and other historians that there are about 40,000 temples which have been broken all over India. Now, um, one, I was talking to uh, an uh, architect actually who is uh, trying to uh, you know, write on temple architecture in India. And I was trying to actually ask him that if we can act, go to sites like the Qutub Minar and other places and Sultan Gadi and other places and see if there, there is also evidence available in some of these places of temples being broken and mosques being built over it. His argument is that the even the, in the construction of original mosques, the uh, architects were or the labor or whoever built the mosques, were, uh, the workers were actually of Hindu origin. So they by default made a lot of Hindu iconography even in mosques. So I wanted to confirm Ah, yes, of course, I mean, uh, this one, a number of Hindu temples were, I mean, uh, destroyed, that is true. But how much uh, and how many? Uh, we can't say whether it is 40,000. Uh, I don't think 40,000 would be a too big a figure. But at least, you know, there are many, many in almost all the places, and especially during the period of Aurangzeb, he had given blanket orders that, I mean, all the temples, I mean, right from in Rajasthan that should be completely destroyed and all those things. So the number might be an exaggerated one, but hundreds of temples were destroyed, that is true. And uh, regarding this uh, this one, Hindu mason using Hindu, th that is there. But at the same time, if you see this Sultan Gadi, or even that uh, Kuvatul Islam, this one mosque, I am not talking about the Kuvatul Islam, uh, it's a Kutub Minar. Kutub Minar is completely an Islamic uh, with this one concept, even because some of the extreme Hindus would say, no, 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 this was built by by Prithi Rajavan for his daughter. This, this. These are all obsolete and uh, absurd ideas. Or Taj Mahal was there was a Hindu uh, Shiva Mandir was there because you know Taj Mahal you just cannot if you wanted to build Taj Mahal even during the period of Jahangir you cannot do it because it is an architectural evolution. Is that the Pietra Dura work? Even the brick size of Taj Mahal itself is, you know, it's Shah Jahani only. It cannot be during the period of Jahangir. It cannot be during the period of Akbar also. Because in Akbar's period, the brick size is 27 into 23 into 4. But Shah Jahani, I mean, during the period of Shah Jahan, he started using this uh, Lakhori bricks. So in Taj Mahal, I mean, it is mainly Lakhori bricks. And then the evolution of the double dome and all those things. Is cannot be, you cannot push it back to the period of Jahangir or Akbar also. Then there is no question of pushing back it to 11th century. Because those extreme Hindus will say, no, it was, I mean, belonged to the Shiva temple belonging to the 11th century. These are all, I mean, just to create problem or their own, I mean, lack of understanding of the subject. But there, of course, in Kutub Minar, Hindu, I mean, architects have worked. For example, Lotus. You go to any of this uh, Sultanas monument, you will be finding a lot of lotus. Lotus has no, no importance in Islam. But in Hinduism, Brahma is known as Patma, uh, Patma Sambhava, the one who is born. And Vishnu is Patmanabha. Shantakaram, Bujagashayanam, Patmanabha, Suresham. So it is all, I mean, lotus and lotus. So similar things have been taken by the, I mean, in Islamic monuments also. Adopted by, I mean, it is mainly because of that Hindu karigar, Hindu craftsmen who were working there. So it was a combination of the concept was, of course, from there, uh, right from Central Asia. And so the execution was carried out by some of the 
Gujarati and Rajasthani craftsmen who have been immensely over. So an amalgamation took place. So that is there in Kutub Minar also in later structures also. That can be separated from this one for the icon I mean this uh, uh, this from the iconoclasm. So these are two different things. There are some restrictions that is a local restriction is that even I wanted to take a photograph it um, and then I could not get it but then I managed it through somebody else. Very it's very very painful very painful. Very painful. Yes 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 it's very painful sometimes you know very painful. And uh, that cannot be presented as a like proof for other cases or like? Uh... No it has happened it's happened. I have uh, two questions. Yes, sir. Uh, one is that in Delhi, I don't see any medieval temples. I, the earliest temple I see is Birla Temple that was built in 1939. Yes. And uh, I happened to ask, uh, you know, someone, and uh, they said that uh, there was a edict that the spire of a temple should not be seen. So yeah. whatever temple exists is very small. Yeah. So I went around Delhi and the one of the the only temple is Yogmaya temple, Yogmaya. which is also near my home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is so small it is almost not to be yeah, noticeable. Yeah, 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 yeah. So for almost one thousand years you don't see any temples today existing oh, in Delhi. Temples were destroyed all this time because of the right and, and no one was built also. No, no, I no mean, no So there was a lot of fear then in the mind yes, against yes, building yes, temples. Yes, that yes. is what I conclude. Yes, yes, yes. You would, okay. Mm. My second question is that uh, I would like to know what are your views upon on uh, the destruction of the Babri Mosque by Karse works? Now, I am not as an archaeologist, you know, we were all against it. Even before the destruction, okay. we said it's yeah. uh, in order to right a historical wrong, one should not again repeat a mistake. Okay. They should have been handed over and then integrated with the whole thing. That should have been the right approach. Why I'm asking you this is because uh, there are two views about that yes. which seem to be taking place. Yes, yes. One is that it's uh, the legitimate aspiration of a race yes. which has been humiliated yes. over centuries so it burst over. Yes, yes. So it was a legitimate anger yes. because most of the time it has been portrayed as a group of lumpen elements who got there. But I have spoken to Karsai works mm. and they do not sound at all like that. Mm. And in fact, when I, you know, also talk to them, analyze them, I did not yes. see that. So there are two views on that. One is that if you destroy the sacred space of a community mm -hmm. and they have to bear it for hundreds of years, one day it will burst forth. And that's a legitimate anger yes. of a grief of a race coming out, right? It is a legitimate so anger. You yeah, it is a legitimate anger. You know, it will burst out. It will burst out and that has happened. But at the same time, as a student of history and archaeology, myself and Sharmaji, we would not agree with that, those things. Okay. I mean, it should have been integrated. It should have been integrated with the new structures and that should have been protected. Like for example, with Native Americans, okay. they go around their sacred spaces yes. which were destroyed yes. Yes. and they almost came to, you know, violence and losing yes. control. Yes. And at that time, intellectuals all around the world supported their cause. Yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. But it was, it didn't happen for yes. the Ram, Ram Jan yes. case. Yes. Yes. That's yes. a tragedy. Yes. Yes. You're right. You're right. It's a legitimate yes. anger. Yeah. If I were a Hindu, I would have reacted the same way. Thank you for sharing. I mean, it was a wonderful eye-opening lecture. Thank you, sir.